Well, welcome back. Police Minister Begit Gaila spent some time with station commanders in the Cape Town Metropole and he visited the Nyanga, Fishhook and Rainburg police stations just yesterday. The Western Cape government had recently appointed a thousand new police officers, but to find out more on what matters were discussed, I'm joined by the minister himself, Minister Begit Gaila. Minister, good to have you and good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. You made that important uh, visit to the Western Cape. I mean, what exactly was discussed upon your arrival? Uh, good morning to you and the listeners and viewers. Uh, it's a second visit almost in a week. Last Wednesday I was in Western Cape. Uh, I'm in Western Cape uh, yesterday and, and today. Yesterday I visited three police stations, as you say. Uh, that would be Nyanga, uh, the Fish Hook, uh, the, and the Tigerback. The Nyanga was the question of the outstanding matters that we dealt with the police as I was here uh, last week. You remember there was a mass murder uh, in Kailicha. There was a murder of three people in River State, uh, and then was to find how much had we progressed in dealing with those matters. But there was also the other matter that was dealing with the image of the police, the Western Cape Police looked as an apartheid police, that they, they police black people differently from the white people uh, in Western Cape. I had to come and deal with that last weekend. But uh, also something happened on that similar, so I had to deal with that, especially two police stations that were, were responsible for that. That would be Fishhook, where people went to protest and broke the law, and there was no quick and just decisive response of the police. But also I went to Tigerback where they had a good name because the journalist who went to open the case in Fishhook was badly treated and they went to Tiger Back and was uh, treated good. So I had to go and see those two different uh, stations behaving in, in, a, in a different way. Right. When we talk about policing, Minister, and you make mention of how residents and community members uh, felt that, you know, black residents were treated differently from other races. H how exactly did you deal with that situation? How did you address that particular problem? Because I don't think it's only isolated to just the Western Cape. Yes, it could be that not isolated in the Western Cape, I would agree, because uh, at one time we dealt in Seneca. But when this Western Cape is more pronounced, uh, you, you take the Be a Belleville issue where the elderly, the frail, the disabled children uh, were, were thrown with the water cannons uh, when they were, instead of talking to them to be on the uh, social distance and behave uh, accordingly when it comes to COVID, but they use the method that they, you use on the protesters, and those people were not protesting. On the same way, people went to protest on the beach, and the same thing was not used the way it was supposed. So that's the thing uh, that last week I came to speak to 78 police station commanders to say that's not the way. They did explain, but I must agree with you, the explanation was not very satisfactory. That's why I've given them two weeks to develop a proper report of what happened, especially from the legal side, right. uh, because they talk about the situation that uh, legally could not deal with that matter, which I don't believe, because uh, regulations uh, are very clear how you should behave with the people that are breaking the law. Yeah, and when it's on the other hand, when we deal with issues of operations within the SAPS, I understand that at least a thousand new officers had been appointed. Is this the solution? Do you think that number is adequate to assist in ensuring that there are enough members of the SAPS uh, on the ground assisting uh, South Africans? Well, the, the people that would have been appointed at the present moment were dealing with, with the reservists. Uh, we, we are all victims of COVID-19. For instance, last year, we were supposed to have pulled about 7,000 of police to the colleges, different colleges, uh, to boost our numbers and to boost the age issue. Remember that with the police, age is a serious issue. Uh, but we couldn't, uh, we, we couldn't deal uh, with that situation. We didn't have a single one trained. So now we're trying to go for 3,000 of the reservists uh, that number won't be sufficient uh, taking on board that last year we, we did not 
uh, train people that we're supposed to have trained. And we're not very sure if, again, we will have that intake this year looking at, at, at the COVID. But at the same time, police on the other side, they suffer. For instance, 27,215 of them have been infected uh, with the COVID, and we have lost about 540 uh, of them. So, which means figures are very low on the duty since there is no intake, but even those that are there will also be, become the victim of the COVID. So it's, it's a situation right. uh, that, as President said yesterday, let's fight and win this COVID so that things go back to normality. Absolutely. In a moment, Minister, I'd like to talk about you know, some of your uh, responses to, to what the President had to say, particularly in, in your department. But before that, allow me, please, to use this opportunity to also ask you, I mean, yesterday we heard the judgment also coming in uh, regarding Normam Goma's case against the Hawks, saying that they acted unlawfully in as far as her race was concerned, citing that it was uh, quite malicious. Your views on that? Well, the, the courts in South Africa are good for everybody. Uh, if Norma took it through courts, that's a correct way to do. If police take it through courts, it's a correct thing to do. One thing that confused me a little bit, I understand that the legal people are not a legal person, legal people are studying it, is when the court yesterday uh, found against the police that they were not supposed to, to have seek the warrant of arrest. Uh, the police go to court to get the warrant, and that court and that warrant was granted by the court. I think the court should have spoken to the court to say you should not have granted that. Police did the right thing, followed law, followed procedure. That police can't just barge uh, in your house. They need to go through the court to get uh, the, 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 the warrant, of which they did. So it's still going to be explained to me why the court found against the police instead of funding against the court that they were not supposed to have granted uh, that, that warrant. So that's a situation that I'm waiting for a further explanation on it. All right. And while you're waiting for that uh, explanation, Minister, and, and perhaps we'll have an opportunity to speak to you about it, yesterday the President, during his State of the Nation address, also spoke about uh, gender-based violence and how there were you know, plans in motion to ensure that they follow through with ensuring that women in this country are not victimized even further uh, when it comes to GBV. And as far as the SAPS is concerned uh, and your involvement as Police Minister, how will you be supporting the President in his statement made yesterday? Well, it's declared that is a second pandemic. Firstly, all members of the South African police will have to understand it as such. Uh, that's why uh, I was very disappointed when one of the female journalists was abused by those thugs that were on the beach protesting against the mask. She was abused there. She went to the police station, uh, our police station, Fish, Fish Rook. She was abused there. That's why she went to Tiger Bank. I had to go straight to that police station to respond. I'm glad that the captain who abused the female journalist and were taking action against him, and there have to be consequences. That's the understanding that must come to say a police, when they do their work, it should be extra, a double effort that they treat with them as they supposed to when they come to the to the police station. So it's, it's a question of us making our contribution, arresting those people, treating women with empathy and sympathy that they're supposed to get there, investigating properly and going forward. But it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, I was looking at the figures. Right. Since October to December, uh, about 172 people have been given life sentences in South Africa. Of, uh, uh, October to December 2020, which means there are police that are doing their work, investigation, and working together with the court and all that. And we need to, to, to make sure that when that happens, we we'll respond and we we'll respond accordingly. All right, Minister, that's where we leave it. Thank you so much for your time. Minister of Police, Minister Begitel.